Good morning painters and welcome. It's Debbie from acrylicpouring.com and today, no crazy experiments for once, I'm just um, pouring for fun today. My hands are pretty blue, all my nails. I've been working a lot with blues and greens recently and so um, I thought I'm going to try and mix it up with a bit of um, some warmer colours. So today I've got a lemon yellow, an orange, a warm red and a burnt umber and they kind of look as though they should go together for me but as you know my colour choices are not always the best so we'll see. I've pre-mixed all the paints, they're mostly into these um, little squeezy bottles here. So I've mixed my paint with Floetrol and I've used a few drops of the liquid wrench silicon spray in these today. So without further ado let's clear the space and we'll bring over the canvas and let's get pouring. So I thought I would do a flip cup today because those always seem to be my favourites. So I'm just going to layer some of these paints in. Starting with my little base of white. And let's go with some of this crazy bright lemon yellow. Very, very bright this one. And then this is my warm red. My orange. This orange always seems to take over in the paintings, so I'm expecting that, well, despite what I put in here, I shall mostly get an orange painting today, but we'll see. And this is my, um, which one was it? Oh, the burnt umber. Put a bit of that one in. And I would really like to get some cells today. Um, getting big cells is not really one of my main priorities when I paint. I just kind of like to have fun with it and see what happens. But today, because I'm doing a, ooh, <laughs> a larger canvas, I'm doing a, a 10 by 10 canvas today. And I've already got a load of paint on it without trying. Um, I thought because the canvas is a bit larger than the tiles and that that I usually do, I would like to get some larger cells today. So I'm really going for it with my paints. Whoa! I'm putting them in from a, a great height. So that I'm hopefully, I'm using the, the force of the squeezy bottles. So that hopefully um, I'm going to get a lot more activity, a lot more paint mixing in the cup and hopefully some more cells. I've got really interesting stuff on the top. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Well, that brown's a bit thick. We'll see what happens. A bit more white, shall we? And uh, these canvases are new. Um, this is only my second time ever painting on an actual canvas. So I'm still not quite sure how much paint I'm going to need. But I think if I just push my cups off to one side, I've got um, some spare paint there if I need it. So I'll flip with this and if necessary, I can add some more paint in and just fill in around the edges. So, oh, I've got a big mess everywhere. I've also treated myself to a nice new cloth. I keep washing my other ones and they're just stained now. So however much I wash them, they always look filthy before I've even started. So I thought, I would flip and then I'm going to flip back and flip again and maybe this will mix up my paints a little bit more maybe I'll get more cells so that's just the only part of my experiment today is I double flipped basically so I'm just going to let that settle now so I'll turn the camera off and we'll come back in a couple of minutes Right, I'm good to go. Let's lift this baby up and see what happens. Yay! Cells! <laughs> now that looks a lot better than what I usually get, so that's interesting. I wonder if that was anything to do with the, the double flip that I did with the cup today. Or maybe it's just, you know, a, an entirely different, um, different set of colours and they react differently together. Who knows? But it does look nice. I don't know if I've got enough paint now, but we'll see. So I'm going to just push all this off to one side so I don't make it too messy. And let's start to move this around a little bit. Push it down towards this corner here, first of all. I don't want to lose too much paint because I'm concerned that I might not quite have enough. So rather than worry too much about the edges right now, let me just move this back.
I'll have plenty of drips, I'm sure, on the table that I'll be able to fill the edges in. So I haven't got to worry too much about that, I think. Okay, let's bring it back this way. Well, I'm very much liking it. Looking good so far. I can see a few bubbles in here, so I will need to pop the torch over it just to get those bubbles out. Okay, and my last corner. Looks like I've got enough paint. Should be absolutely fine. So there's a handy little calculator on one of the resin websites and I should really um, go take a look at that because it gives you an idea if you want to cover a certain surface um, how much resin you would need. And I'm thinking with our paint pouring it would probably be, uh, I don't know, a similar amount of paint because we do waste a little bit over the sides. So I'm thinking that probably it would be a good indicator for, you know, when you're starting out with a size of surface that you've not worked on before, it would be a good indicator of how much paint you probably need in your cup to start with. And I've got plenty of nice designs going over the edge, so I really don't need to fill in very much apart from the corners, which is nice. I do like it when the, the pattern goes over the edge. Okay, so let's pop that down. I'm just going to wash my hands and then we'll take a look. So I'm really liking it so far. I've got um, a nice warm palette for a change without the orange overly dominating, which is nice. I can see a few bubbles, so I am just going to lightly torch it. And hopefully not change it too much, but I just need to deal with a few bubbles here. Yeah. So I've kept my torch a good distance away and I could see all the bubbles popping but not too much um, otherwise. So I've got my smaller torch which helps me get a little bit more into any details and I've got this nice patch just here. I wonder if I torched here just a little, I might get it to develop a bit more, so let's see. Oh, I think that's as much as it's going to do. Oh. I can see I have what looks like um, a little um, lump or a little bump in my paint. I've got one of these tools, it's just got um, like a pointy end. So if I get anything like that, where's it gone? There. I can hopefully, there we go. There's a little bump in the paint just there, and that's gone. Put that over on my bit of tissue there. So it always pays to have a real good look at your painting while it's still wet because there's an opportunity to take out that little bump that I wouldn't have had later on. It would have made a, a real mess later if I tried to remove it. So otherwise, I think it looks good. I might just try and bring out a little bit more of this dark contrast. Let's see if that will work. No, I think that's as much as it's going to do. So. That made a nice change. Um, nothing crazy going on, just a bit of painting for fun, some nice bright um, warm colours and I like it. So let's bring it out and show some details. So there we are, this darker area is nice. I maybe should have put a little bit more of that brown because uh, it seems to have turned out really nicely. Although I can look, the colour in the screen isn't looking like I'm seeing here. It's one of those things, isn't it, with the camera? Unfortunately, you know, in real life things look pretty vibrant. And then and the exposure on a, a camera tries to average things out to create like a, an average value. And it can lose a lot of those colours and things. But uh, it does, yeah, in the screen it looks a little bit kind of brown and red. Whereas here it looks more orange and yellow. But... It's another success, I think. So I'm just going to spend a minute and just uh, make sure the sides are all good. And I'm going to use that little torch just along the sides to bring out any cells on the sides of the painting. And then if you can hang around for uh, a couple of minutes more, I'll show you what this one looks like when it's all dry and varnished. 
So here it is, finished, all varnished and looking glossy now. And I'm going to have to look back on the video and see what this looked like originally, because I'm not sure whether the colours have dried exactly the same. Certainly all of the uh, cells and everything that were there, they're still there, nothing has changed. I think it all looks the same as it did, but I'm not sure whether the colours have changed. It seems quite... Um, maybe a little bit darker than it was so I'll have to look back and compare but anyway it's been uh, a pleasure I've enjoyed working with these colors and having you painting along with me today so thank you very much for watching the channel and I look forward to seeing you in a video again soon